All right, guys, welcome to another video. Today, we're talking about three ways men fail in relationships. And these are all critically important, but especially the first one. And I see this with men that are just dating and men that are uh, in marriage already. And so this is, it's sad that these are this common and failure to address any one of these things could easily derail and shift the, the polarity in your relationship in a really unfavorable way. What I mean by pol polarity is that you being the masculine man and her being the feminine woman without getting into hokey, woo-woo terms. That's just a fact. So number one is failing to be the evolving version of the man that she first met. This is so critically important and so many guys fail to see this is that they're one kind of guy when they meet her. And then as soon as they get into the relationship, it's like they sit back, they're no longer in the driver's seat of their, their lives or their relationship. And they slip into complacency and complacency and passivity. Uh, all of those things are, they completely kill desire. And so this is the greatest piece of advice that I could say to any man that wants to maintain uh, a healthy um, uh, dynamic within the relationship is continue to evolve as a man. I see men that are actively trying to get in shape, actively pursuing either a higher ranking in their jobs or more financial freedom within their businesses or starting a side hustle or what have you. And then as soon as they meet the girl with all of these traits that they have that they've sort of created throughout those processes, and then they just stop. They stop because maybe they're, they're, they're getting some sex and you shouldn't be having sex before marriage. And I've said this time and time and time again, but again, not to derail the topic. And then they get into the relationship and they sit back because maybe the sex has made them comfortable or maybe just having a, you know, a woman in their life has made them comfortable, but do not slip into passivity. Continue to be the evolving version of the man that she first met. And a lot of the problems that men face in relationships will, you know, will be taken care of by virtue of being this man. And so if you are, you know, getting yourself into shape or already are in shape, you're eating well, you're pursuing just a higher level of focus and a higher level of mastery in your life with whatever you have going on, whether you're in your business or in your job or any hobbies that you have, your social circle, what have you, do not slip. Maintain these things because these are the very same things that she came to be attracted to you for. When you slip into complacency, it's almost like you're insulting the woman by you fed her a bit of a lie. It's like, here's this caricature of this man that I met. And then as soon as he met me, all of a sudden he's soft. What happens when times get hard? What happens when we hit a bump in the road? What happens when things go sideways? Are you going to be pre prepared to lead and handle and steering the ship? Or are you going to kind of look over at her and say, uh, I don't really know what to do now because you've allowed yourself to slip. Become the evolving version of the man that she first met. And a lot of the problems that most men face in relationships, you will never have to face because you're continuing to sharpen that sword of mastery. You're continuing to you know, improve upon your fitness all of these things that she already was attracted to you for. And so by you know selling her a false bill of goods, you are insulting her and wasting her time. And what are you even doing, bro, if that is you know what happens to you when you get into a relationship? The fundamentals of your life are flawed. And I would really address the, the motivation for you even doing those things. Because a lot of times, guys do those things in order to get a woman. Gentlemen, you should be doing those things because you are wanting to pursue greatness in your own life as a man, that you're wanting to become a more refined, strong, honorable, masterful, honorable version of, of, uh, of a man, especially in a man in, in a world that is so devoid of this type of masculinity, it would really behoove you to continue to pursue those things with fervor and with vigor. And again, a lot of the poor dynamics men get into in, with relationships will more or less be solved by taking care of this huge issue. Be the evolving version of the man that she first met and uh, you'll have little problems. Number two, a lack of vision and focus for your life. See, a lot of men want to lead relationships. They, you know, a lot of guys talk about being leaders in their relationships, leaders in their own lives. And of course, women, feminine, good quality, high quality women, we're not talking about feminists here, want to be led. It is not an, a woman's natural proclivity to be a leader. That means she's got to shift her feminine energy to masculine energy, and that just causes all kinds of chaos 
in her own life and in with, within the confines of her relationship. And so, and I know I address these questions a lot in a lot of my videos. It's a ask yourself these three questions. Who are you? What do you want? And where are you going? Because yes, women want to be led, but they do not want to be led nowhere. They want security, safety, and stability in a relationship. So having a clear vision that's slightly above her, look, keeping your eyes on the horizon and knowing where you want to end up and then reverse engineering that vision of, of where you want to be with her, you know, as your first mate, you being the captain of the ship. So if that's starting a family, you know, having a house, um, you know, I'm going to be moving to this place so we can, we can raise our family or I'm going to be doing this with our, our business or my business so I can provide meaningfully for our family. All of these questions are critical that you answer as a man. Who are you? What do you want? Where are you going? She doesn't want to be led nowhere. You don't want to be led nowhere. So have an actual focus and vision for your life. And another one is guys, and this is related to this one. Do not make her your purpose. Do not make her your vision because no woman wants that. And all women will crumble under that kind of pressure. And that's not to insult women. That's just not how they're designed. A man is supposed to have a vision that is greater than even the vision of his own family because downstream of that vision, downstream from the dedication to that vision, he's able to properly provide, protect, and preside within his family. And all of those things are incredibly important because you are a very one-dimensional man. And I would say you're not even a man at all if your whole purpose and your vision for your life is your woman. See, she's not going to want that. That is going to shift your frame in a way where you're no longer acting like a man within your relationship. You're looking to her for continual approval instead of to, to, uh, to God or asking God or the brothers beside you for approval. It's not to say that you don't need her approval. Of course you do, but you do not need her permission. You do not need to ask her or you shouldn't be asking her what your purpose and your vision and your focus for your life should be. You should already know that. So when you grab her by the hand and say, hey, listen, babe, I got this. This is where we're going. You'll see her relax into the feminine nature that she was designed to be within and exist within. So guys, answer those three questions, have a vision and have a focus for your life. And again, coupled with that first one, you're going to encounter very little issues within your relationships other than just the, you know, the domesticated day-to-day -day life of, of living with a woman is we're fallen flawed creatures, that's going to happen. Navigating conflict and whatnot is going to be another video I'm going to be doing. But handle this. This is your foundational principles as a man. Have a vision, have a focus, know where you're going. Don't try to lead her nowhere because she's not going to want to, she's going to resist that leadership. And a man that doesn't have a vision, to me, is not a man at all. Answer those three questions. Number three, dating without the intention of marriage. This is kind of related to the vision part. But I see a lot of guys getting into relationships and then just coasting. It makes no sense to me. What are you actually dating her for? You know, very early on, actually, I would say first or second date, my wife and I talked about the intentions of, you know, what we wanted out of this potential relationship. I laid it out. Hey, listen, I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to provide for my family. I want to protect my family. I want to be the priest of my household. I want to preside by my family. Yes, all of those things. Those were clear intentions. A lot of guys get into a relationship and they don't really know what they want from it. And guys, you know I'm an advocate for getting married rather quickly. And I mean, what I mean by quickly is quickly by, by comparison of the standard that this Western world projects upon us. Get married within a year or two years, experience all the seasons together. I, I think that's total bullcrap. Set out your intentions early on. And again, I see this a lot in my, with my coaching clients is that there's, the woman is kind of bucking up against the man's leadership. And let me say this too. She doesn't really have to follow you if she's not married to you. Of course, there's going to be an element of some kind of submission and you have you know, the leadership in the relationship. Those dynamics are still at play, but not fully. She has no reason to submit to you unless you know, you're her husband. So, and, and guys, listen, calling her your girlfriend past, you know, let's say a year at the very most is juvenile, immature, and silly. How many guys that I know that are you know, 25 plus, 30 plus, 40 plus that still have girlfriends? What are you, a little boy? You're still in high school. You have this little girlfriend that you, you kiss and you touch once in a while. Stop doing that stuff. And you're going to cohabitate with her before marriage so you can play house with your relationship and see how it goes and playing dress up with traditional gender roles. And hey, you're like, we're acting like a couple. Listen, until you guys are married, you guys are not a true couple. 
and I see a lot of women bucking up against the leadership of the man because he has no clear intentions for the relationship. And as soon as the, the man clears those things up, and as soon as he lays his intentions out and makes them very, very clear, all of a sudden there is sort of like this relaxation that happens in her, her mind because she knows, just like point number two, she's not being led nowhere. She's not being led into a void of nothingness where you guys are cohabitating before, uh, before marriage, you guys are uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, and, and there's really no end result there. Um, so make it clear early on. Within the first three dates, I would say, that would be the, the guideline that I would follow. I did it on date number one because the chemistry between my wife and I was so strong and we already had rapport. We were talking a lot prior. But if it's like the first date, maybe that's not the place. But by date number three, lay it out. And if she's like off put and she's scared by it, she probably doesn't see that future with you or she's just not that type of woman. And that's okay. Move on. And this is going to weed out the serious women from the not so serious women, guys. It's a, it's a very strong vetting tool, right? And don't have sex with her before marriage so you can see her for who she is. And then also lay out your intentions. And you'll either see, you know, her light up and say, wow, okay, this guy actually has intentions for dating me. We're not going to just end up nowhere. And, you know, she's going to know that you're taking it seriously by not having sex with her before marriage. Because a lot of guys slip into complacency because they're getting the spoils of what should only exist within marriage, but they're getting it in this really casual relationship. And that's where a lot of guys fail. And so, and ladies, just a quick tip for you too. Mentioning that you're not going to have sex with them before marriage is going to weed out the men from the boys. Straight up. Any man that's worth his salt, any man that's honorable, any man that is uh, strong and confident and has a clear vision that respects you and honors you and honors the future and honors you as his future spouse will not want to get you in the bedroom prematurely. That's an absolute fact. You say this early on, you know what? 90% of guys might fall by the wayside, but that's okay because you do not want a grown boy leading you in your relationship. You want a grown man and a grown man is able to wait uh, for that for when you guys are married, period, end of story. And so this video is a little bit on the shorter side because it's a pretty, it's three pretty concise points. Okay. Um, number one, and that is be the evolving version of the man that she first fell in love with or first met. Number two, have a clear vision and focus for your life. And number three, date with intention within three dates, lay it on on the line, get married to her prior to one year. And another pro tip, do not cohabitate before marriage. Stay separate until at least you're three to six months away from getting married. The statistics support this. I've seen a lot of couples that have gone on to have flourishing relationships that did this. I did this as well. My wife and I moved in when we were like two or three months away from getting married. We were already engaged. Don't elongate this engagement process. Kick the can down the road to have this elaborate wedding party. Keep that money in your pockets. Have a small thing with friends and family. Get married. Do the thing. Move on to that next chapter of your life where you can truly grow in your maturity as a man, and then she can actually really nurture your home, make that house into a home, and really nurture and raise up your family because that's what we need to be doing. Okay, men need to be more virtuous, and if we can make men more virtuous within their own households and allow them to take the reins of the relationship the way that God intended us to do, then all of this degenerate stuff we see around us would not be occurring. So take these three things, three things, guys. Apply it. Watch your relationship succeed. Um, you know, watch you finally be able to vet a partner to the point where you know there's clarity that it would potentially work. And I say potentially because we're just flawed humans and it's always a risk getting into a marriage, even with somebody that's high quality, somebody that's you, that you vetted. But remember, men do hard things and that means putting our backs up against risk for the sake of our future families. So that's all I want to say about that. God bless you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I know this channel is small for now, but I really enjoy putting out these videos. So that's all I got to say. Take care.